I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And welcome to Sounds Like a Bunch of Hoopla! We're both from the Taylor Community Library, and we're here to recommend some items to use your Hoopla checkouts on. These are all items that we have either already checked out or are planning on checking out soon. This week, we are talking about music and comics. So let's start with what we are currently listening to. Sarah, what are you listening to right now? Let me tell you, um, for some reason, I've been feeling super nostalgic. Um, so I've been on a early 2000s kick. Ooh. And just so you know, for the things that I'm currently listening to and then recently listening to, I was in middle school and high school during this time. And dang, we have some awesome music back then. <laughs> <laughs> what I had just checked out and I'm listening to right now, which has some amazing gems, uh, is No Doubt. Becky, do you remember No Doubt? Yes, of course I, of course I remember No Doubt. Oh. When's the fun? So my favorite album, the one that I just checked out, is Return of Saturn. That was literally released in the year 2000. So it was kicking it off with the new millennium. Yep. Listening to songs like uh, Bathwater, Ex-Girlfriend, Jams, straight up. Okay. Uh, I believe that Return of Saturn was their fourth album. And it's the best thing that I've ever listened to. And I know I believed it back then when I was about uh, 10. (laughs) So it's, it's a little bit ska. It's a little bit punk. It's just all hype rock. Yeah. Like, do you remember how cool ska was 20 years ago? (laughs) Yes. Let me tell you, it's still that cool. Yeah. I would go to the grave saying that ska is still that cool. I'm still into it. What about you? What are you currently listening to? Well, first I have to say in mm, celebration of us talking about music this week, I decided to wear my new shirt that I just bought from Target, which is Sublime. I saw this, I had to buy it. I was like, this is going to be perfect for sounds like a bunch of hoopla. But unfortunately, I'm not listening to Sublime right now. It should be. Freaking love Sublime. But what I am listening to, uh, just, you know, the greatest album of all time, Chromatica by Lady Gaga. That was a pretty good album. This album has just dropped. It is on Hoopla. Little fun fact, Lady Gaga actually rented a truck and hand-delivered her albums to stores because of COVID to make sure that they had them on release day. She's amazing. I love her, and this album is absolutely amazing if you loved her album art pop this is the album for you it's another dance album there's not a single song i don't like like usually there's like one that i'm like it's all right this is amazing i love every single song we have songs on there that are just like they're gonna be amazing she has collaborated with ariana grande on a song she collaborated with elton john on a song uh it's just the best and it could possibly be one of the best albums she's ever released. I love that Hoopla is killing it with the new releases. Because yes. I've been listening to that on uh, Amazon Music. I pay for Amazon Music and I shouldn't. If I can get <laughs> the bangers on Hoopla for free from your library, yes. can- cancel culture, cancel Amazon Music, cancel iTunes. Cancel <laughs> so you want to talk about what I have in the, just like done? Hmm. I've recently listened to <sighs> the used not only not only did they just drop a new album the used just dropped a new album but we on hoopla have every single one of their albums every single one they were one of my favorite bands in high school uh as you know i was a scene kid i thought i was pretty hip <laughs> So I uh, loved Burt McCracken. That's the lead singer they used. (laughs) So definitely all of their albums are for fans of alt rock. And they have such a similar feel um, to a lot of different of those like alt punk bands from the early 2000s, like Silverstein, Census Fail. Love them. My Chemical Romance. Big fan, big fan. Big fan, big fan. I'm going to their concert this fall. Well, if it's still going on. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> the Youth MCR actually even did a cover of Under Pressure. Yes. At one of their shows like 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. 
It's really good. It's so good. Speaking of favorites, Becky, you know who else is on there that I found? So I checked who? out all of the albums, even though I own them. <laughs> who? Kill Switch Engage. Oh, God. <laughs> Kill Switch Engage is my favorite band of all time. And Hoopa has almost every single one of their albums. If you like metal or metalcore, or if you want to like metal, if you're <laughs> on the fence of metal, check them out. Their lyrics are super supportive. It's not all about like blood and death. No, it's, it's, it's like lifting you up, but metal. <laughs> some yelling at you some of the time, which I think is fine. Um, and you can sing and scream along. It's not that hard on your voice because there's, you know, it gives you time off of the screaming. I would argue that their best album of all time, of all time, how funny is someone about this, is As Daylight Dies. Every single song on that album is amazing. I still play them to this day in my car, have the windows down, just blasting some kill switch engage, do like doing the mo- the moves on the good the fake guitar, you know? And I love Kill Switch Engage because they they're a band that's been through a lot. You know, they started off with one lead singer. He left, then another guy came in, Howard Jones. He's the best. Then Howard Jones left and Jesse came back. But but <laughs> Just this last fall, they came out with um, a brand new song called The Signal Fire. And I watched the music video. I knew nothing about it. I just said, oh, a new song dropped. Clicked play on that music video. Jesse's singing and screaming. And then they see it cuts to like a back silhouette of a man who's, who's outline I know. And I go, is that? And then all of a sudden, Jesse smiles, camera pans, Howard. <laughs> Clamped. New, I had goosebumps the whole time. It, it was fantastic. It was a great song. All right. So I have not listened to anything in a in a bit on Hoopla. I think the last thing was Taylor Swift's Loved album. So I'm going to skip down, which I will say Loved is amazing. Really good album. Good for you, Taylor Swift. Didn't want to like it. Loved it. Thanks a lot for that. But I'm going to skip down to what I want to listen to. Of course, I do want to listen to that new used album. But there is an album on there that I would really like to listen to because I'm turning into a fan. Now, please bear with me. I'm not positive on how to say her name. I think, hopefully, hey, maybe your little cousins can tell me. Um, Is it Dua Lipa? Dua Lipa? Dua Lipa. Brooke says, you want, come on over here, Brooke. (laughs) Tell the good people how to say her name. Dua Lipa. Thank you very much. Dua Lipa. You're from a hip kid. (laughs) (laughs) I have been really liking a lot of her songs, and I noticed that her album is on Hoopla, so I really want to check it out. It's probably going to be great. I have high hopes for it. Something else I also want to check out is... We have a lot of really good movie soundtracks on Hoopla. So, of course, we have, I think, if not all, we have majority of the Harry Potter soundtracks. Expect, I know for sure we have movie one soundtrack. So, good I mean. study soundtracks. Amazing. Um, and then also, I really want to check out, like, Frozen 2. That soundtrack was really, really good. So, what are you planning? I'm going to jump in here and just agree wholeheartedly with the soundtrack situation because <laughs> the next up on my list that I was going to talk about is The Greatest Showman. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> just, it's, Becky, it's just such a super singable soundtrack. If I'm cleaning or I'm driving or whatever and I need to belt out some songs to stay motivated and pass the time, this is my go-to. So it will remain on my favorites on my hoopla list forever. Look, is the movie historical, historically accurate? No. Was P.T. Barnum a good person? Absolutely not. <laughs> but do I enjoy hearing Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron sing or watch the amazing Zendaya do acrobatics while singing? <laughs> yes, I do. So I will love this soundtrack forever. And I will love the movie forever just to watch them dancing. You know what one I will not be checking out, Becky? What? Are you not? What are you saving your Hoopla checkouts on not using? 
there's an album called Pete the Cat. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just not a Pete the Cat fan. I have never read a Pete the Cat, and I love cats, but he just seems like a jerk. He does. He does seem like a jerk. He doesn't seem like a good I cat. Mean, I'm not, nothing against anybody who loves Pete the Cat. He's just not for me. And I will be saving my check out on that music, whatever that music would be. Yeah, that's strange. Because he's a cat in a story. Hmm. Is he singing? Now, we might need to check it out to find out what it is. <laughs> All right, then I, res- I rescind that. I guess we're going to check it out for research. So mine, there's only one that I have as well to save your Hoopla checkout on. And that is an album called... Corporate Lifestyle Number 4, Conglomerate Consolidation by DJ Ali. So this is a electronic album for the corporate lifestyle. Um, it sounds it, great. <laughs> this may be the album for you. It was not the album for me. <laughs> it, I will say that uh, it has some really cool titles. So uh, it has work-related titles such as emails, video conference but it's all electronic music and it it was strange (laughs) i will say i think i would have appreciated it more if in those songs like emails you hear like a a swoosh or something repeatedly (laughs) like emails are coming in or like in like the video conference you hear like a phone ringing or something i don't know but I just, I, I don't think, I sometimes like to listen to music while working, gets me in a good headspace, gets me hype, I start getting real productive, but I couldn't do it with this album. <laughs> and if you, you tell me one thing, is there a song on that album entitled, anywhere in the title, Synergy? I don't think so. Then toss it. Missed Opportunity. Missed Opportunity. I'll pro- I'm probably going to check that out. Okay, so now let's move on to comics. I feel like this section is going to be longer, as we are both fans of comics and graphic novels. So I have a disclaimer right here. Okay. Uh, we could honestly do an entire episode on comics and graphic novels, as you know. Yeah. I had to condense this list to almost nothing <laughs> so that it wouldn't be two hours long. Yeah. So I apologize in advance for not having the million titles that I do love on here. Yeah, I definitely, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it short, sweet, tell you what it's about, what I like, what I don't like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're going we're gonna to try. We're going to try. So first up, what I'm reading now. Yes. The last final uh, issue of the Curse Word series. Knew it. You knew it. You knew it. So uh, Curse Words is, it's a very short series. It's only five issues. Um, it's, it's definitely adult or older teen. There are some pretty adult themes in there um, and a lot of hyperviolence. Um, but it's, it's basically, it's just an outlandish black comedy that weaves fantasy, humor, and absurdism all set in the glorious NYC. We love NYC. New York City. Big Apple. It honestly, um, when I picked up that first issue, it wasn't like anything I'd ever read before. And I know that the writers and the illustrator had a lot of fun collaborating on this short series because um, they do a lot of other work either together and, or separate. Um, they're, they're really big in the comic world. But it's basically, it's a hipster wizard whose name is Wizard who <laughs> takes magic commissions and also has a talking koala sidekick. So without giving spoilers, if that doesn't draw you in, I have no idea what will make you happy. Because that sounds like the greatest series of all time. And honestly, it was for me. What about you? What are you reading right now? So I have actually started a graphic novel today for this exact reason. <laughs> it was on my want to read, and I decided to go ahead and pick it up today. I had some time, 
So that is Black History in Its Own Words, which is illustrated by Ronald Wimberly. This is a graphic novel of a collection that Ronald did for a magazine. So he was assigned a task. Um, I think it was in celebration of Black History Month, if I'm remembering the intro correctly. They assigned him to find some different uh, Black luminaries and their quotes and do something artistic with them for a segment in the magazine. And he really ran with it. It was something that they repeated for a couple of years and he did more than what was asked of him because he really, really enjoyed the project. So he has taken three years worth, which I believe is 24 illustrations and put it into a graphic novel. And uh, like I said, it features quotes from Black Luminaries with a portrait illustration that is done by Ronald. And I really, really like his artwork. Um, the really cool thing is not only do we get to see these cool quotes and these amazing pictures, but he also includes a small, like, one to two sentences about who these people are. So it's not just, you know, a face and a quote. It's also what some of their accomplishments are and why they're important to Black history. And with what's going on, you know, I, I really want to better educate myself. And this seemed like a really good starting point. I'm about halfway through it. And I have to say that so far, I think this is a great place if you really don't know like where to start or if you want to kind of get like teens in because some of the quotes have strong language. So I would say it's probably geared towards teens and adults, but I think this is something that is great for something to inspire you on your journey of enlightenment. And I, it's so cool. I do want to share one quote from the book so far that is so far my favorite. It is from Shirley Chrisom, which if you don't know who she is, um, in 1968, she was the first black woman elected to Congress. And in 1972, she was the first woman to run for the presidential nomination of the Democratic Party. And I highly suggest that you find more information about Shirley. She is definitely an inspiration. A really cool place to start is watching the new Hulu show, Mrs. America. She is featured in that show and it's a really, really good show. But uh, her quote is, in the end, anti-black, anti-female, and all forms of discrimination are equivalent to the same thing, anti-humanism. And when I read that, I was just like, yes. Like if you're saying that anybody, whether their skin color, their sexual orientation, their gender, is less than, then what you're saying is that you are not into humanism. And I just, I read that quote and it was like, yes. So I, I definitely highly, highly suggest that you guys check this out. It's really, really cool. And like I said, I really, really love Ronald's artwork. And now what are some recent things that you've checked out being short and sweet? <laughs> I will be as short and sweet as I possibly can. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep the momentum going on what you were talking about. Um, <clears throat> there's a great graphic novel on there that I've recently read. Uh, it's, it's more for tweens teen area. Um, it's called, they called us enemy by George Takai. Yes. I want to read so, this. Yeah. So this is George Takai's graphic memoir, which pulls absolutely no punches on the cruelty the U S subjected over 100,000 Japanese Americans to during world war II set in the concentration camps in America. We're not going to call them internment camps. These yeah. were concentration camps. This raw telling of a dark chapter in the U.S. history will make you cry. It's going to make you angry. And it's going to make you wonder why we're still allowing human beings to be put in cages. If we don't learn from our mistakes, we are bound to repeat them. So please, please read this graphic. Follow up with other books or audiobooks or comics written by people of color about their own experiences and learn a little bit more about the history of systemic racism and inequality in our country. Which I will give you guys, a, I guess it's not really a sneak peek because when this goes up, this will already be posted, but a prompt for our summer reading this year for this week that this will be posted is to read a book by a person of color. So this is Perfect thing to check out. Just got a couple of suggestions right there. Yes. We couldn't have a hoopla video about graphic novels without me talking about saga. Okay. I figured. I knew I knew for sure you're gonna talk about curse words and you're gonna talk about saga. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my two favorite series, of course. 
So Saga, I don't think you've started it yet, have you? I have not. It's on my to read list. Oh, yeah. I heard really good things. So I want well, one through nine. So you're good. You can start with Hoopla or when we get back in, you can start with the hardcover copies. Yep. But this is literally the greatest series I have ever read. Uh, it's, it's starting to come to its end. So I will be very sad to see it go. But it is literally an epic saga where Romeo and Juliet meets Starship Troopers. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with that. That's the perfect analogy I can come up with. It's, you know, if you like science fiction and fantasy, character-centered action and drama, this is 100% for you. The art is beautiful. The stories are incredible, and it's going to suck you in. It's won so many awards. Yeah, it has. Uh, and, it, and it deserves it. You'll fall so deep into that story that it's like watching a movie but in your head. With the, with the art and the storyline, you're going to play the movie in your head. It's fantastic. And honestly, I really hope this becomes like a TV series because I would love to see those characters brought to life. I love, it I sounds like it would be like the perfect thing to become a TV series. Yeah. All right. So my recently read, recently reads, my recently read, um, uh, unintentionally took on a theme. Um, both of mine are perfect for June because they both are very prideful and they both have the word moon in the title. So <laughs> maybe something has to do with the other. But the the first one is Moonstruck Volume 2. This is by Grace Ellis and Shea Beagle. This is a fantasy paranormal that mm-hmm. is set in a fantasy world where we meet all these different types of people, not only based on their race, their sexual identity, their sexual orientation, but also their species. So it, there are I think there are humans, but we don't meet a whole lot of humans. So these people are, like, our main character is a werewolf. We meet, like, a Medusa-like character. Um, Everybody is some kind of creature. And what's really cool is not only are we seeing all of these very, like, sex-positive and identity-positive things happening, but what I really love is when they do it in a way where that is not the main plot point. That is just something that's happening in the background. And the main plot point of this book is kind of like a murder mystery who, who done it. But instead of murder, it's, there's this magician that is doing, is doing all these shows that are really popular. But what ends up happening is somebody in the audience gets their paranormal abilities taken away from them. So it's a, who is this magician? Every time they try to catch him, he disappears. And so it's, it's a really, really cool comic we have volume one and volume two so i definitely want to check out volume two but volume one was really good i really like the artwork everything is like kind of like pastels and pretty and i will say one really cool thing that i was like oh this is the best is that they had a nod towards neopets i was like oh yes this is the best thing ever (laughs) googles yeah, I'm just googled, man. My other one is a, another one with Moon in the title that has some really positive LGBTQ themes, and that is Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker. So in this book, we have a uh, featured character who is trans, and again, doesn't make it a forefront. It is something I don't even necessarily think that they like outright say it. It's just something that we, using like context clues, understand. But basically what ends up happening is we have this character who works in her grandma's bookshop where, and and she's a witch, by the way. Uh, She's a witch. She works in her grandma's bookshop lending out spell books. So it's almost like a library. And there's all this like dark magic and like weird things happening in the woods. Different paranormal creatures are kind of like, getting disrupted and something's going on. And so she's been going to the woods to try to like take care of these creatures and figure out what's going on. And she comes across her childhood best friend and crush who is a werewolf and our trans character. And this is somebody that they ran away from home a long time ago um, because they were coming into their identity, but also because of a really bad family situation. 
and now they've come back and they have partnered up to figure out what is going on in their world. And the really cool thing about this book is that it's mostly a really cute love story with some like black magic things happening in the background. So really, really cool. If you're a fan of Katie O'Neill, the paranormal creatures that are in the woods definitely look like a Katie O'Neill creature that would be fe featured in one of her books. So if you are a fan of hers, I think you will also really love Mooncakes. What about you? What are some of your recent reads? Well, I have one recent read, which actually feeds into my two reads. Ooh. So recently, I, um, similar to with your paranormal, I read Stranger Things Volume 1, The Other Side. Ooh. So this one is, it's for teens. So it's set during the time frame of season one, um, but it follows Will Byers on his harrowing journey in the Upside Down. Okay. Now, if you haven't seen Stranger Things, I really can't say anything else about it that wouldn't be <laughs> a spoiler. So just do yourself a favor and watch it <laughs> and then read this one. So obviously, like, there's three seasons of amazing television set in the 80s, um, which are I'm pretty sure the 80s were, like, tubular. Is that what they said? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were red. They were tubular. I'm hip with it. I mean, I wasn't alive, but I get it. But that one was the, on the only one that I've recently read. There's actually two other Stranger Things graphics that are also available um, that are 100% on my to-read list. There is Stranger Things 6. So, you know, 11. So this is apparently about six. So Perfect. that one is a prequel to the, what we know in the TV series, which apparently okay. gives more insight into Dr. Brenner and then all of the bizarre happenings over at the Hawkins lab. Mm -hmm. So that one was also set for like teens and adults, older teens and adults. But then there's a more lighthearted Stranger Things um, comic that's on there. It's called Stranger Things Zombie Boys that said it was more for, like, tweens. It looks like it takes place post-events in season one when the boys are just trying to find, like, normalcy after everything crazy that happened with Eleven and everything. But it it looks like a new kid's in town, and they're, like, making a movie, and either they become real zombies or they pretend to be zombies. It looks adorable. That's all you need to know. It's, it's set yeah. in hockey. Indiana. Just read it. It looks great. So, and I love, you know, I love Mike and Dustin and all them. So I'll definitely be reading both of those. So my first one that is on my want to read is for kids. It is a kids graphic novel by one of my favorite people, Katie O'Neill, who I mentioned earlier. It is called Dewdrop. This is supposed to be a character called Dewdrop, who's this adorable underwater creature that lives in a pond, and he is cheering on his friends as they bring their talents to the pond sports fair. So it sounds super cute. I've loved everything by Katie O'Neill that I've read so far, so I definitely want to check this out. The other thing that is on my list, and I don't know if you know about this, maybe you do, you're usually more in the know than I am, especially when it comes to comics and graphic novels. But on Hoopla, we have I Am Not Okay With This by Charles Forsman. So this has recently become a Netflix original. This is about a 15-year-old girl who is dealing with the traumatic death of her father, her sexual identity, and coming to the terms that she has now found out she has telekinetic powers. So um, there, I do have some trigger warnings for you guys, but just know that from my research, this is what inspired the show. So um, this will be different from the show. I've heard that <laughs> I, I did a little bit more research to find out like what are the trigger warnings because I've only watched some of the show. I, I still have those last two episodes to watch, but it seems like in terms of like how dark and violent it is that they're pretty equal but different. So the graphic has some things that didn't happen in the show that are pretty out there, and then the show has some things that didn't happen in the graphic that are out there, but if you're interested in watching it, it's definitely for targeted for older teens and adults. The trigger warnings are for sex, strong language, suicide, and death. So 
just know about that. I want to quickly mention it just because we started the show. You have now finished it, but it's really good. And then I saw this comic and was like, oh my God. So I really want to check this out. And then my last one, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm trying to become a better ally and definitely look into more things that are written by people of color or about people of color. So I this has been on my want to read for a very long time. I've been told so many times to read this book. It has won so many awards. And that is March by John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. That's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> this is so good. I've been meaning to read it. There are three, and I believe that that's it. I, I don't think mm -hmm. I've heard anything about there being more. Um, all three are available on Hoopla. Um, this is a story about John Lewis's childhood in rural Alabama, his life-changing meeting with Martin Luther King Jr., and the birth of the Nashville student movement. So it's definitely a perfect time to read it. I'm somebody who, I'm just, I'm not a real big fan of nonfiction in book form. Uh, you know, give me a TV show, a movie, I'm, I'm all there for it. So I think my journey to nonfiction in comic form, I think is going to be really good. I, I have found a lot of really cool things on Hoopla. There's also My Friend Dahmer is on Hoopla. So I, I definitely want to go on a journey of nonfiction within the comic and graphic novel. And I think that one's going to be perfect. My Friend Dahmer is in my car right now. <laughs> creepy <laughs> pretty thick. yeah he's in there the, the comic book oh my god that would be terrifying just burn the car down i guess <laughs> but what is on your want to read besides march i already took it all right you took that one so give me a second and something that i am super excited to read something's killing the children Ooh. so this just looks super creepy and from what i found out about it Basically, there's a town where children disappear. Stories start circulating that there's monsters in the woods, which the, all the adults are, of course, are like, nah. But then a stranger shows up whose name is Erica Slaughter. Suspicious. And does, exactly. And she does believe in those monsters because she's a monster killer. That's all I know. That's all I know about that it. That sounds good. Sounds real good. I'm going to read that. And then additionally... Uh, if you've been on Netflix in the last couple of weeks, you've seen that uh, Avatar is on the most it's on the most watch list for the last few weeks, which is fantastic. Avatar is amazing. I'm rewatching it. We have eleven. That's right, one and one. Eleven. <laughs> eleven different issues that jump right back into Ang's story. Um, and continue where the series left off, and also lost adventures with Aang and his gang. So if you love the show, if you're re-watching the show, or if you're watching the show for the, the first time, once you're done with it, jump over to Hoopla, check out those issues if you need to get more, more airbender in you, or waterbender. But it's great because it's, this is one of those series, you know, a lot of the stuff that I suggest with, with comics are, are only for, you know, they're geared towards adults or older teens, where I think anybody can read them, but, you know, some of the themes might be lost on you or some of the, the information um, might be a little out of your, um, your comfort zone. Yeah. With Avatar, this is something that I can suggest for anybody. It's yeah. Avatar. It's great, but the themes are so good. Yeah. It's fantastic. So now, last but not least... Let's move on to what not to check out from Hoopla in terms of comics. What do you have for us today? You know what I'm going to talk about? And this is going to be, this is going to be controversial opinion, Becky. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of these books, these comics collections on Hoopla, um, but I really think you should save your checkouts on the Garfield compilation books. <laughs> What's wrong with it's, Garfield? <laughs> just a grumpy, fat, orange cat who <laughs> eats lasagna, which cats shouldn't eat lasagna. They'll die. <laughs> Don't feed the cat lasagna. They're not meant to eat lasagna. It's too many noodles and cheeses. They, they can't handle all that lactose. 
Okay. <laughs> but also, you can find all of the Garfield comics online. Just like Google it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, like, why waste a checkout? Just type in, bring up DuckDuckGo, type in Garfield comic strip, enter. There you go. You can spend hours on that. Um, Save your checkouts for some, you know, hardier works, I guess. Poor Garfield. <laughs> Sorry, Garfield. What about you? What would you suess that we, as readers, say our check outs on? So I just have one. This one, again, it may be controversial. So this book has gotten a lot of praise. I've heard great things about it, which is why I checked it out. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad book. I just think that it wasn't for me. I think I read it at the wrong time. And I read it with the wrong expectations. So this is Sheets by Brenna Thumler. I know. I know. I know a lot of good stuff about that. Yes, so have I. So again, I think it, it was just me. But from what I'm going to describe, if this also describes you currently, then maybe you should save your checkout or change your expectations like I did. So this book is about a 13, I want to make sure that 13, 13 year old girl, she's young, which is like my main point why I didn't like this book. A 13 year old girl who has recently lost her mother and she is in charge of running the family laundromat because her dad cannot function now that her mom has passed. And she's 13. <laughs> And this girl uh, meets this ghost who is a young boy that has passed way too early. And they kind of come together and create a partnership to get rid of this neighbor who is trying to take over the family business from her. So I, I went in, I've heard all these great things. I hear that premise and I'm like, this is going to be great. It's going to be cute and lighthearted and a great read. And I'm a big fan of paranormal. So ghosts, count me in. However, um, that was my expectation, and that is not exactly what happened. This book is dealing with a lot, and it is pretty dark. And on top of that, I read this in early April. So, you know, the very beginning stages of the stay-at-home order uh, wasn't the best headspace to be in. I thought I was going into this book that was going to transport me to a world and make me happy and... It did not. It did not. So if you are somebody who's also still currently in that headspace and you're looking for something to be fun, don't go into this book. Um, I do think it was good, but I, I just did not read it at the right time. And like I have mentioned previously on a different episode of Sounds Like a Bunch of Hoopla, I don't handle it well when kids are mistreated, it is always such a trigger for me. And she's 13. She's running this laundromat. Her dad, you know, like she's cooking the meals. She's going to school. Then she's cooking meals. She's taking care of her little brother. And then she's going and running this family laundromat before and after school. And she has these customers that come in and are like yelling at her that things aren't correct. She's got this neighbor that's trying to sabotage her. He's actively doing things to try to make people boycott her store so that he can buy it from her. And I just, I don't handle it well. <laughs> so it, it was a lot. There were moments that were funny. There were moments that were heartfelt, but it's, it's just dealing with a lot. And if you're not in the right headspace, it's not going to be worth your checkout. So it's, it's a, I'm not saying don't ever check it out, but make sure that you have the right expectations going in and you're in the right headspace. We hope we've given you some new music and comics to borrow from Hoopla. If you end up checking them out, be sure to come back and tell us in the comments what you thought about them. See you next time on Sounds Like a Bunch of Hoopla! Hoopla!